Here we go. We are on, we are live. And welcome. <laughs> um, I hope everyone can see this screen. Um, welcome to this workshop called Writing on Air. Um, I'm Zania Vrigden Hill, and my co host Michael Budkowski is joining us from Melbourne, Australia. Um, so thank you all for joining and uh, I'll just give a brief introduction of the workshop and the project that this is kind of um, part of. So this workshop is part of the collaborative project Writing on Air, which is based on the cre creation of non-speculative narratives developed out of themes surrounding territory, control, security and the intangible structures that shape and are shaped by these fields. The project draws on the respective research practices of myself, Zania, and of Michael, exploring fiction as a means of mediating a more contextualized understanding of design in the world around us. Um, so as um, we should be doing within these workshop environments, I just wanted to say hi and to ask um, if everybody can introduce themselves Maybe starting with um, a robot, <laughs> with our friend, the robot. So um, who are you and where are you? Is, um, Hello, uh, my name is Pete. Uh, I'm friends with uh, Michael and Z. Uh, we both, oh, I guess we all went to Design Academy. I'm from a slightly different department. Uh, I'm currently in Eindhoven. Thanks. A very great yes. day in Eindhoven. Oh yeah, it's... Um, very wet and rainy in Melbourne and dark, in case anyone wanted to know. <laughs> um, Esteban, uh, we know each other well. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us where you are? Uh, hi, I'm Esteban. Um, I studied with uh, Zanai and Michael as well um, in the department before it turned into Critical Inquiry Lab. And with Michael as well in creating and writing, actually. <laughs> And uh, I'm based in Dordrecht in the Netherlands. Thanks. And Hamish, are you able to um, let us know who you are and where you are? Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Hamish. I'm if I'm from Melbourne as well. I am. I studied with Z. Um, we studied industrial design at RMIT together. Thanks. I think for we're time. expecting one more piece to join us, but it, maybe they. We'll see if they turn up or not. But I think this is our group for now, um, unless somebody else joins us along the way. And we should also say we've constructed this workshop in such a way that if you are watching the live stream um, and aren't part of the Zoom call, you're still able to follow along. So if you're interested, please do. Um, so now we'll run through the idea of this workshop. Um, so this workshop starts with a series of prompts, which will go on to generate fragments of text and the idea is that we're not working towards something conclusive with this process, but rather towards a, a beginning. Um, so what do we mean by a prompt? Because I think that's probably important to qualify. Um, in this particular case, it's something to unstick, to reorient and kind of inspire a bit of movement in writing, something to kind of shuffle things around, something to spur insight. Um, but most of all, it's a bit of a provocation for our own thinking and uh, way of approaching things. Um, so themes that um, uh, we've been writing around um, between the two of us for now, but obviously in this workshop, we're opening this up a bit more um, to you guys as well. Um, and this is a good sort of starting point or prompt in itself is that um, we've been writing around themes of borders and security and scales of control. Uh, and that's where sort of, we're sort of positioning the workshop today. Um, what we would like to invite you to do, if you can, is to open up some sort of uh, writing document uh, so that you can write along with us. Um, whichever is your most comfortable <laughs> uh, type of writing document, if it's Google Drive or if it's literally like Word or Pages or something like that. Um, yeah, if you could open that up um, and you'll be able to follow along with us as we also write. Uh, 
if everyone's set up. Um, yeah, we have about two minutes kind of allowed per prompt. Um, but of course, please feel free to take more or less time on each of them as you require. Um, and yeah, kind of as Michael said, we will also be working with you through this as we as we run this workshop. Um, so anyway, we can get started. So let's begin. And please feel free to interject uh, at yeah. any point as well. Discuss. So the first prompt uh, is draw a line on the page, please. It probably doesn't require two minutes. <laughs> Um, so this is a border. So the first writing prompt is, what kind of a border is it? So I'm going to set a timer for two minutes. My spelling, as usual, is actually not so bad. That's surprising. keys are really loud oh i can't hear them okay good but i would be excited if i could <laughs> <laughs> i can't hear anything this is going to be a very um quiet activity i think <laughs> feel free to read your text out it's sometimes i feel like reading out text as i'm writing it is helpful but that could also be distracting i guess if you're someone that needs to concentrate um, while you're writing. Gosh. Okay. A few more seconds and then we move on to the next one. All right. Throughout this text, you can also see that we've inserted some quotes, some theoretical quotes. So feel free to read those. I'm not going to read it out or anything, but um, they're there if you're interested or want to note down a reference. Um, so the next quote, or next prompt rather, is uh, describe this border that you're writing about. What's there? What kind of boundary is it? What is it made of? This can kind of all be one, one prompt. I'm actually going to borrow from the previous bit of text I wrote. That's is that is that cheating? I'm not sure. No, do what you need to do.
is that a timer for this one? <laughs> Let's give it a yes. because it's got quite a few different questions in there. Um, if anyone feels stuck or not sure what to write to, um, let us know and we can help with that somehow. Mm -hmm. I'm finding myself just writing about our workshop and what's going on, which is quite strange. I did not think this would happen. Um, and I really want to read what Z is writing, but I'm too scared to look away from my own text. <laughs> <laughs> I have to scroll down, Michael. <laughs> no, go. I, I, we're both like scrolling at different times. It's, um, um, okay. This is very interesting because we're all in our own documents, but um, except for us. All right. Next prompt. This time I'm going to send a set a timer. Uh, how are you moving? moving gosh that's a yeah that's a tricky one are you moving at all well it's that's the question isn't it I'm going for um, a high point Scrabble word. Um, and now I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a really nice word, but um, I don't know if it's helping me right now. I think I'm stuck in the land of binaries and um, this and that. Personality instead, if that breaks you out of it. Oh, what was that? Go for duality instead of dichotomy. No. <laughs> That'll break you out of binaries. The dual duality of the dichotomy is a binary. <laughs> no. All right. Next prompt. Is there a beginning? Is there an approach?
I feel like some of this that I'm writing, I will be cringing at when we have to read it back. But okay. um, yeah, I'm hoping that we can all feel crazy and comfortable enough to not worry about it too much. Look how profound. Look how profound this is. <laughs> Shouldn't be scared of profanity. Well, profanity, that's not the right word, is it? Um, I don't think we should be scared to be profound if it's something we're drawn towards. But um, we can also laugh at it if we need to. Joy of doing this on a computer is self editing. <laughs> I did notice as the Google Docs have a new, let me suggest lots of things for you sort of setting. Which is quite bizarre. Is there an approach? Now, when I wrote this question, I was thinking of actually physically walking up and approaching something mm. rather than, but I guess it's, it's one of those questions that has multiple ways to read it. In a little while, um, in about 20 seconds, we can move on to the next one. When you're ready, next prompt is, is it safe to cross? All right, the next prompt is where does panic sit? Or is there panic at all? I just realized I keep jumping in before you see, I'm gonna <laughs> go behind you this time. <laughs>
The next question is, are you alone? <laughs> I just went for highlighting instead of text color. Hey, that sounds nice. You could do that if you want. It's a bit bold. I'm getting a bit bored of being blue. <laughs> just change. How truthful or how fictional should I be? That's a question. Next quote, how does the air feel? Are we almost at the end, do you think? We are almost at the end. This, this is a second last prompt. Okay. I hope people are feeling like they've been able to keep up. Um, how does the air feel? All I can think of is rain right now. I'm sure Hamish probably feels the same. another few seconds and then we'll do the last one. So the last prompt is what is under your feet? See, an honest response is sort of oatmeal covered carpet, but that's not very interesting.
Okay. Last minute, and then we have 10 minutes left until we need to wrap up. I, I wonder if this stage, if anybody wanted to add any prompts. Um, if you do want to add any, just add them in the chat uh, and we'll copy and paste them into the document. Mm -hmm. And if not, would anyone like to share their text? I think you or I might have to go first. <laughs> Would you like to go, Michael? Would I like? Oh, yeah. Now I've dogged myself in, huh? You have. Well done. I will be the brave um, uh, first brave person to read it out. And then hopefully you guys will feel a little more comfortable after you've heard how terrible this sounds. Beginning. Um, yes, I don't know if I was consistent with my highlighting, so bear with me. Um, uh, so after our, our line that we drew, um, this is a border. Uh, this line also acts as a bridge. It marks a still point in the duration of the workshop, but also provides a portal through to another portion of the workshop. It's very literal. Uh, suddenly the solid line becomes malleable. So I was kind of starting to think that even though we've drawn a line, it's also a bridge, which means suddenly it's a broken line. Uh, a field of text. Oh, so what's, what's on the other side of the line? A field of text hidden from view, but being written and evolved by participants who are with us, but writing in seclusion. Two of us write in Melbourne where it's raining, rain providing another type of border or boundary. What type of border or boundary is this? Well, a wet one. <laughs> What's it made of? It's made of rain. Um, how am I moving? I'm static or I started to talk in terms of us rather than me, which is strange. Static in our relationship to the screens and pages we have before us, uh, but this is momentary. Um, so moving with the screen which feels like not moving at all. Um, is there a beginning? This border begins with a set time and persists for a set duration. We have, we have set this duration, but this is also malleable. We can bend time by altering the duration. Time across time zones, time zones that shift to save daylight. Is there an approach? You approach this boundary or borderline up the stairway past the laundry through a sliding door and you'll see a modest blue chair with a laptop on a stand and that's the approach is it safe to cross uh, the crossing has occurred without any regard for safety was it safe what could the repercussions be if we keep moving can we avoid them or outrun them uh, reaching out through browsers and similar portals is a negotiation, but it feels cozy and safe. Where does panic sit? <laughs> this is a strange one. Um, panic comes as a low hum and unsettling, a feeling of something out of place or the relationship to something having shifted, slow panic, fast panic. I just really sort of felt like, oh my God, I need to position myself in relationship to panic and I panicked. Um, are you alone? Not within this document uh, and not within this housing estate and not within the city, not within state boundary lines, not within oceanic borders, not within this continental place. And I just sort of felt like not alone, not ever. Um, how does the air feel? It feels thick with rain, full, pack jammed, heavy and being driven into the ground. Uh, what's under my feet? Or what's under the feet, uh, the living room, 
the neighbor's bedroom, the neighbor's living room, the garden, the understory in the garden, the car park, the river that used to flow through, flow through this part of the city, which is now buried under tarmac. Mm -hmm. And that is the end. Nice. It's a good start, <laughs> which is the point. That's the point. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, would anyone else like to share? We've got a few minutes left. Otherwise, I can read mine if that's necessary. <laughs> it is necessary. I can share. Thank you, Pete. I, I, was, I can share with you how it looks like. I've never, I have actually haven't written in pen and paper for a long time. So I also find just sort of. Oh, wow. I thought that's what you were doing. Oh, that's really that. exciting. I just haven't done this for so long. It's actually quite relieving to just write. That's nice. It's a nice okay. form. <laughs> but I'll share some visual rather than thank you <laughs> um, okay I can very quickly read mine or we can have a chat if anything came out of this for anyone in the last five minutes um, up to you guys I think you should read yours unless Esteban or Hamish would like to jump in all right, here we go. <clears throat> Feel free to jump in. Um, this is a light border, somewhat gossamer, but stretched outwards in front of me. It is taller than I am and carries on beneath my feet, translucent, almost pearlescent, like the skin of a bubble. Right now it is solidified by sound, a variation of controlled voices, authority passed across and through radio waves. It slides around beneath, all-encompassing yet permeable. There's a space in between drawn like a wire. Words shape it, lending it depth and form. Right now, moving is effortless. A forward momentum driven by engine and oil, tailwind and wing. There is always a beginning. There is time and space shifting over and around. This is where it got a bit too profound. Um, <laughs> but there is also a bluntness, a solidity in massive scale. You have to let someone know you're there, knock politely, listen for a response. There are a few rules to keep in mind. A provision of access is documentation. I've often wondered at the authority given by a piece of paper, a stamp, a signature, validation of identity. It's safe as long as you sit in your seat. If anywhere panic rests in the gut, again, maybe this wasn't a great prompt, an unfamiliar zone, an estranged interior, it sits between the liver and intestine, sends messages upwards too. There are others around me also seated within the structures of this thing. The windows provide views of cities and seas, quietly observed, considered and passed over. The air feels stale on my face, my wrists. Occasionally it's stifling, tired. Sometimes there's not enough of it. Under my feet is an aluminium underbelly, caging or cradling freight and bags. Beneath that is a full 40,000 feet of air. That's, what, that's it. Thank you. Um, so. How much time do we have left? Do I think you know? we only have a few minutes. Um, um, I would really like to hear from Esteban or Hamish, but I understand if you're feeling bashful um do either of you feel like sharing i can read. Oh, sure. i can read um this is an imagined border a self-imposed border i can change it or i cannot change it i can shift it down my page or have it control and confine the characters on my screen i can choose to accept its diagonal state on my page or I can reconfigure it to whatever I please. It is a border in my head. The border is thin and blue. It slopes downwards from left to right, not meeting the margins on either edge of the page. It floats between characters. Um, I am moving always, as is the border. My eyes dart from fingertips to flashing cursor and back. My hands shift across the black plastic on my lap and change the black plastic into language and meaning from one side of the border to now. The beginning is a time and a place, 
a top and a stopwatch, an alarm and a cursor. There is no approach to the border. It, there can't be. It demands space on the page. The computer doesn't know what to do with such an awful, irregular thing, and so it demands space, and the border takes it. The space then becomes the border too, just like the fence becomes part of the field it stands in. Uh, it is not safe to cross. It cannot be crossed. It demands separation and distance. It demands to divide the characters in the binary that scrolls down the neon and the characters listen. There is panic in the space, perhaps. The space comes from panic over an irregular shape, a diagonal slash across a page of columns and rows. Uh, am I alone? I am typing alone to the sound of many others. Uh, how does the air feel? Um, the kind of cold air, the air is cold. The kind of cold air that exists only in a big house with a few objects. Air that is too big for the people who are too small for the space. And what is under your feet? Uh, woven nylon and hours of labor of grown and dried and cut timber of soil tilled and watered, of many things dead and alive and unseen. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. That was actually really, like, I feel like that was way more cohesive than what I ended up with. <laughs> um, thank you for sharing. Esteban, I'm sorry, I think um, we probably need to wrap this up now. Um, but thank you so much for joining and we hope this kind of gave you something to think about or potentially something to write about. Um, and if you're happy to potentially share um, what you've written in some way, you can send it to Michael or I, and um, maybe we can publish it somewhere um, if you're comfortable with that. But we'll see how yeah. we go. <laughs> I was going to say, Esteban, please send me anything that you've written if you feel like you, you want to, because I would be super interested to read it mm -hmm. um, and also to see what you thought of um, our text today. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, everyone, so much for joining. Um, and we will talk to you soon. Oh, there's the signal. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.